Once you have a, a personal Excel file created, we can now use it to store and trigger code from. Now, when you start Excel, it will be hidden by default. Change case procedure file open, but we find that the personal file is not, so we have to unhide. There's our personal file. We can then go into the editor and we can see we're in the personal file. Now, one suggestion I would make certainly here for the project for the personal file is to rename it. The default is VBA project, and you can see it says that against the change case procedure. You select the line and we can change its name. So we can call it personal VBA, or you could call it guy VBA, assuming you were called guy, obviously. So that's the code for our personnel file. If we want to add some code in, we go into the modules. We already have a module one. And you can see it has sub macro one, which was the demo we created in order for Excel to create the personal file. We don't actually need that. We can remove that and we can create our own little sub procedure. So sub age. So our subroutine is going to ask the user for their date of birth and effectively tell them how old they are. So the first thing we need is a variable to hold the response. So dim x as string. This is because although we're collecting a date, the input box that we're going to use always collects string values. And x is going to be equal to the input box. Prompting text. What is your date of birth? Title. We'll just put Q1. And then the rest is optional, so we'll leave that. We then need to hold their age, so dim z as integer. And we need to calculate their age. So z is going to be equal to today's date minus their date of birth, which is x, but it's a string. So we need to use the cdate function to convert x into a date. We then have to divide the result of that by 365.25 which will give us some decimal places. So we need to take the integer value. So there are a lot of brackets here, vitally important for things to be done in the correct order. So we have two built-in functions, int and cdate. cdate converts wherever the date is someone types as that actually into a date so that the VBA can work with it. Takes that away from today's date, which will give us the largest number. Divide that by 365.25 to allow for leap years. That will then give us somebody's age, but with decimal places. And we just take the integer value to remove that. And then message box, the response back out to them. You are. And Z. And. Years old. Now obviously, if we've been mean, we could throw some ifs in that say you're very old, you're very young, etc. So that's just a straightforward small subroutine built inside the personal. So we're inside the personal file here, inside module one. So we've created a subroutine. We can then go back into Excel and perhaps add a quick access option there. So we'll come down to macros. There's our age one. Let's drop it on the quick access toolbar. Change its icon to smiley face. How old are you? Okay. Okay. And then triggering this triggers our procedure that's held in the personal file. And I could tell it that I was born August the 2nd, 1966. Okay. And I'm 45, apparently. Now, this doesn't require personal file to be visible or for you to be working in the personal file. So once you've added some code to the personal file, the steps are firstly to save it and then secondly to rehide it so you don't accidentally use it as a normal Excel file. And now we're in the change case procedure and this will still work. What is your date of birth? Let's go for November 15, 1978. And I'm 33. Much younger, thank you. So that's unhiding the personal file, going to the VBA code, adding the code to module one, if that's where you want to put the things, you could put forms in, etc., And then you can trigger the code as normal. Now that button there will always trigger the code in the personal file, 
regardless of whichever Excel file we are in. Now there are other ways of moving code into your personal file. So if we go back into the developer in Visual Basic, you can see we can see personal VBA here. Even though we've hidden the Excel file, we can still see the VBA code. And it may be that from my change procedure, I would like all the functionality of that change case. So we can move forms across. So I can come down to the change case form and actually move that into my personal VBA just by dragging it here in the interface. You can see that's going to let me let go there on personal VBA. And it physically recreates the form here in the personal file. So I can double click and I'm looking at case change for the personal.xls file. Now, for that form to work properly, there were some code in the module. So I open module one in my change case file, and that's just the triggering piece of code. So I could copy that by highlighting, go into module one for my personal VBA, and paste that in. And now I have all the code moved into personal file, so it's available all the time I'm in Excel. So it's just making the right decision on which code goes where. Any code that you're going to use over and over again that could be called from a ribbon or from a keyboard shortcut is probably best stored in the personal file. Any code that is specific to a particular workbook should be stored with that workbook because it's not much use to anything else. So there's no point in clogging up the personal file with that. And if you're going to be emailing files, if the code must go with the file, then it needs to be in the project for that file, not in your personal project. So this, in this case, I've stuck with the personal.xlsb, but as I demonstrated earlier, you can create your own file to store all your own code. Make sure that in your routine backups, you back up this file. You get the path name here, question mark application dot start path. So you know where the startup folder is. So you can either tell your backup system to back up that folder as well, or you routinely take a copy of that file and store it away. You've seen we can move code into here, either through copy and paste, or simply drag and drop through the interface here. You could, if there was a lot of code in module one, for example, just drag that into the personal VBA and it will move the whole module sheet into there. Just as we did with the forms, we just drag them into personal. One caveat is to make sure that if you do unhide the personal file using view and unhide, that you then make sure you rehide it before you close Excel. Now, if you happen to make any changes at all to the personal file, usually when you're in the code, because you've got it hidden here, when you close Excel, you'll be prompted to save any changes to that file. Again, if you make sure you say save, it's the default anyway, then the code you've added in will be saved with the personal file and will be available the next time you open Excel.